Hey, it's reverse morning trial, Mavid. Guys, today is April 13th, 2022. This is my fourth year anniversary from having my cardiac ablation procedure. It's been a blessing. I've had a few people over this last year ask me if I could do an update. And it's a very simple update. Everything's wonderful. Um, my procedure was done by Dr. Alguera. I'll leave his phone number in the video description. Also, if you need a good cardiologist, the person who recommended Dr. Aguera was my cardiologist, Dr. Steinman. Um, sometimes when people ask you for a recommendation for a doctor, I had a woman at work, uh, Carol Duvernau, she asked me if I had a doctor and I said yes. And she said, she was from Haiti. She said, what did he do for you? What did he do for you? And I thought to myself, he never did anything for me. <laughs> well, I felt stupid giving her a number, but I can't say that about Dr. Steinman. He's done things for me. Like he gave me his phone number. If he if I ever had to call him in the middle of the night, I could call him. You know, uh, he told me about if I was going to pick a cardiac surgeon, I told him the name of the person. He said, ah, he wouldn't do that. And I said, why? He said, well, that person is good and he does a lot, but he does too many. He said, he does too many. He's just in a rush. And so he didn't say rush, but he just, he didn't say the guy was bad. He just said, this other guy, he's, he's been doing him for 20 years and he doesn't do five a day, you know? So uh, <laughs> I said, that, that sounds good. So I've had no problems. I've not, I'm not taking any medication except I take a statin and that's not for my, my uh, AFib. Um, I occasionally have some skipping. And I've gone over that with my doctor and it's not a concern. Sometimes I'm going to talk to him next time I see him. Sometimes at heart, my heart at night when I'm laying down, I think my heart rate gets kind of low. Um, but zero, zero AFib, zero out of rhythm. Um, and it's so much of a blessing to be in rhythm because when you have paroxysmal AFib, it's frequently going in and out, in and out. So you never get used to it. It's always like a, a stranger. You don't want to come knock on your door that comes knock on your door. So I went into it in detail in the video I made a few years ago about my AFib, how, uh, what things that led up to it and what I try to do to get rid of it. And then my ablation procedure and so on. But uh, this is just a video to let you know that if I had to do it again, I would do it again. If you're on the fence thinking about it, um, I don't remember if mine was cryosurgery or the other one where they heat up, uh, but uh, but it's been four years. And I also have continued to try to not do anything that would aggravate it, or uh, I don't take drugs or alcohol or do a lot of crazy stuff. I try to stay away from drama. And the only thing I could think of that I might have made me get the AFID to begin with was I was always worried about a lot of stuff. I had a lot of uh, getting things upset. So uh, when you get upset, you get cortisol released into your body. And I think that's bad. Um, so. I've been trying to not get upset as much. So, uh, and, and thankfully the last two years, there's been nothing in the news to get me upset. So, <laughs> so I, uh, I've been doing good. Um, in fact, I had my blood work done just the other day and I've got the best cholesterol in my life. Um, got a little problem with my legs and my feet, but I think that's a bulge in my spine. I think, I don't think it's stenosis like the doctor said. And I'm doing some, uh, we're getting off subject here, aren't we? <laughs> uh, another thing, my glove box, I'm like, no, it's uh, everything's good, guys. I uh, thank you for asking. And if you're worried about uh, an ablation, you should be worried. But I think the odds of dying was like 10,000 to one or something. Where like if you have a hip surgery or a shoulder surgery, that's even worse. You, can, you know, so um, there's, I, it was killing me. It was killing me. I was dying. I was slowly dying and uh, I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, I got a good surgeon and I've been so lucky to have been going on this long. Uh, there's a, a significant portion of people, it doesn't work. If you wait too long or if you're too old or if you have certain things with your body, um, sometimes people start smoking again or doing things that, that wasn't good to begin with. You know, I find it helps. If you have a log book that you write down your blood pressure, your pulse, what you ate that day, if you feel good or even happy uh, and th things you've been doing that day that might have triggered something later on. So you can sort of be a detective and try to listen to your body and, and see what's going on with yourself. And then if you notice some changes, you can look on your log and see if there was something going on that maybe 
would have triggered what's going on. So it's also helpful to talk to your doctor if they need to know when somebody started or stopped or so on. Keep track of what you're doing. And it's helpful to get into that habit. And something I started when I'm AFib and I'm still doing it. So um, although it can make you into hypochondriac where you just start worrying about too much. Um, but still, um, it's been a blessing. Um, I was worried about it. I tried 17 things before the ablation. I didn't want to, I mean, you fix the problem. You don't, you know, cut something up. But I said, well, you know what? Maybe I was just born with this. So um, I've been rambling on too long, guys. It's, uh, I'm, I'm doing good. It's been four years. And thanks for watching. See you out there.